Happy Wednesday to you. What's going on, fantasy football players? This is Razzball Radio. This is the Fantasy Sports Network. This is Nick Capozzi. This handsome guy right here is Robert Langevin, a.k.a. Smokey, a.k.a. Robbie Blue Eyes, a.k.a. Rob the Diva, a.k.a. Oh, there's a lot of AKAs there, buddy. Hey, what's wrong with your camera, man? Keep messing it up. You know, we're trying to do a, a show here. You know, can you, like, tilt your, your camera back a little bit, please? I have to restart this. What a mess, Rob. Thank you. Thank you for coming prepared to Razzball Radio. Actually, you know what? The uh, We got some comments yesterday. People are really loving T-Hole Tuesdays, man. So, um, Rob Langevin Wednesdays. We're going to we're gonna have to pump it up a little bit, brother. Doesn't have that same ring to T-Hole Tuesday. We might have to work on that. Uh, what can we do? Wacky Wednesdays. Wacky Smoky, there's something there, but you yeah, know, we gotta we gotta maintain FCC regulations. All right, so Robbie, you know what? I don't want to do a regular show today. I, I, I want to go off the radar. I want to go off the grid. <sighs> that actually might happen sooner rather than later. Let's do something different. Go you know over. what? You want to talk about uh, fantasy soccer? No, absolutely, absolutely. Let's do it. I know you would, but the listeners wouldn't. All right, we gotta bring them quality fantasy football information. But I don't know. I feel like doing something different today. Something different. Okay. All right. So, um, Sensitive Rob, a.k.a. Robert Langevin. So, Ahmad Bradshaw busts his leg. That sucks for Ahmad. Probably his immediate family. Probably not be you know able to tote the kids around on a regular basis anymore. But I think what this does is Trent Richardson has been um, a dumpster fire. I think it's fair to say that. And I'm a bit disappointed because I actually like Trent Richardson going into the year. I thought, you know, and everyone was like, Nick, you're stupid. Well, maybe I'm a little bit stupid. There were some flashes there, but I don't think the answer. So I'm thinking is boom, Haran, Heron, Haran. Is this guy going to get an opportunity? Because he's 0% owned. I like how Andrew Luck uses running backs near the goal line. You know, there's opportunities there for them to catch some touchdowns. I kind of like boom at 0%. What are you thinking? You down with the boom? Yeah, I, I think it remains to be seen. I think they're going to try to to ride Richardson and see what they get from him. You know, he's not an awful, awful back out of the backfield. He's got 22 catches, and he's almost averaging 10 yards a catch. So he's not completely useful, useless in that department. But the loss of Bradshaw in that offense is going to take its toll later in the like later in the games as it winds down because he's key in, when it comes down to clutch time when you need that veteran presence. You know, <clears throat> Heron... He didn't do much to, to show me anything in preseason. Um, I think the Colts are going to sign somebody off the street, to be honest with you. And with the news of uh, Ben Tate getting released, I just don't I see don't it. break news from... yet. I'm supposed to lob that to you, man. Well, Nick, breaking news. Hold on. Ben Tate was Hold released. Hold on. I got a call coming in. It's, it's fantasy legend Lenny Melnick. Hold on. Lenny, I'm taping a show. With Rob Langevin. I'll get back to you. You're the only guy I would take a call from on the show. Okay, I'll call you back. I can't see no Lenny. Yeah, look. Here's the thing with Boom. This guy had 16 touchdowns when he did get an opportunity to start at the Ohio State University. And the problem is, as far as I'm concerned, is uh, his draft stock dipped a little bit because he was part of that scandal with, you know, the selling the jerseys and et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, that's how they do at the Ohio State University. I just think he could be one of those guys that comes out of nowhere only beca only because of opportunity. Um, you know, ran a pretty decent uh, 40. I think it was just over four and a half. But, I mean, that's faster than Trent Richardson right now. Yeah. What happened to Trent Richardson? What happened? Why did you do this to me, Trent? I believed in you, man. I believed. I just think he got overhyped as a running back coming out of Alabama. And just did. he had, he had some sort of goods with Cleveland that won, won half of one year and – he, he's just not in the right offense, or he's just—he's basically not showing what he can do because he's being a malcontent or lazy or yeah, I don't wasted know. talent. How's that? Wasted talent. <clears throat> yeah, all right, I'm with you because the talent is there. He bugs me because usually I, you know, I might miss on a guy because I don't like opportunity or something like that. But when it comes to sheer ability, I always thought T. Rich had it. All right, let's go to the nose news that you broke. Ben Tate gets cut. Surprise, surprise. If you're really smart, listen to the Fantasy Funhouse on SiriusXM Fantasy with, of course, Roto Expert Nando Defino. 
where I am every Tuesday, you know that I've been stumping Isaiah Crowell for weeks. And, you know, I actually said today, Mike Pettin. Pettin is actually Italian for they want Crowell to win the job. And now that they've cut Ben Tate, I think it's going to be the Crowell show. What do you think? You know, we, we talked about this briefly a couple of weeks ago, and I said West would be the guy, and he actually had more carries that week when we talked. And then Crowell showed wrong. out well last week. You were wrong. Yeah, well, yeah I, I'm sorry that I could be wrong once in a while. It happens, you know. But I still don't believe that Crowell's going to take the job and run with it. I still think that they're going to probably be like a, like a 60-40 split at running back. I mean, is that fantasy useful at 60%? Absolutely. But it's not anything to be like, oh, look, I told you Isaiah Crowell was the man. No, what I'm saying is, I think what they want is Crowell to run away with the job and it'd be more of a 75-25 split. I think that's what they want. And I think they're trying to set him up. The fact that he fumbled the other day and they still mm -hmm. kept running him out, to me, is a real indicator that they want him to, uh, to have a real opportunity there. So, all right, over, under, rest of seasons for touchdowns, Isaiah Crowell, four. Over. Yeah? Well, hey, they only got, what, seven games left? Mm-hmm. So, Over. Would you rather have Isaiah Crowell or Alfred Blue rest of season? Uh, Crowell, because Foster's going to come back. Crowell or Charles Sims? Hmm, that's a good one. I made an argument for Sims today. This guy had 203 catches in college between Houston and West Virginia. That's a lot. The fact that uh, Lovey Smith's regime picked him up, you know, that he had Matt Forte. And Forte mm -hmm. might not be a touchdown maker, but he's between the 20s uh, Baker, you know. So mm -hmm. I see a real opportunity there for Sims. I actually picked him up in a dynasty league. What do you think about this trade? I gave up Alshon Jeffrey and Trent Richardson. So basically I gave up Al, uh, Alshon Jeffrey. I got Brandon Cooks. This is a dynasty, okay? Keep everybody. Mm -hmm. I got Cooks. I got Charles Sims and I got Devontae Freeman. I think you win. I think you lose now, but win later. I think so. I it happened before the injury to Cooks. Cooks, of course, out two to four weeks. Pick up Kenny Stills. Yeah. Although that I, offense has been such a mess too. Going back to that Crowell or Sims, I think I'm going to take Sims there. Well, hold on. I tell you what. Why don't we tease that? We'll come back after the break, and you can tell us why. Because uh, you know we got to go to the commercial. Rasball Radio Fantasy Sports Network. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Razzball Radio Fantasy Sports Network. Okay, Rob Langevin is with me, at Smokey underscore Loogie, because he's our Loogie out of the pen, but he's a starter here on Razzball Radio. Rob, uh, before we went to break, I challenged you with uh, Isaiah Crowell or Charles Sims, and of course, you were about to make a brilliant argument, but we have to go to break. So, break this argument out. You know, I can make an argument for either guy there, because guys are returning from injury. So with Cleveland, you have Josh Gordon coming back, which is going to open up the running game there a lot better yep. for Cleveland. So same thing in Tampa Bay. McCown came back and basically showed what they signed him for, and Mike Evans is showing out, and they're starting to get in the pass game back. So you can make a case for both guys. I just think Sims has is in a better offense to fit his capabilities for a fantasy purpose. Yeah, uh, hmm. That's an interesting argument. I got a feeling, too, we might see Johnny Manziel sooner rather than later. I know I've been saying that for a couple weeks, but look at Hoyer's completion percentages. Disaster. The running game's good. Defense is solid. Well, Hoyer's not a, Hoyer just threw 50, 50 attempts last week. That's not his game. That's, he's a 25. You know, he's like an Alex Smith light is what he is. He is what he should be. But there's no way he should be throwing 50 passes in an NFL game and, and have the team be effective. Yeah, I think if uh, he was from Mankato, Minnesota, as opposed to Cleveland, we may have already seen Johnny Football. Yeah. Just saying. Just saying. So, did you want to take over the rest of the show? Oh, well, we could talk about whatever you like. I mean, if you want to just dip right back into fantasy soccer, we can. And, you know, the EPL schedule this weekend is looking very plush. All right, listen, you keep your Chelsea's and your Aston Villas and your West Side stories to yourself. It's so, funny. They sound like beds when you talk about them. I'm going to go get a Chelsea. Or, you know, the Aston Villa model looks great. <laughs> Give me the Fulham. Thanks very much. Hull. All right. Julius Thomas. Sorry. What, I, what's, it's like we drank Goofy Juice or something. Were you drinking before you came on air? Uh, you better say today? no. What's today? It's Wednesday. Yes. No, he wasn't. He's joking. Don't make jokes like that, Rob. Robbie Blue Eyes. Julius Thomas, tweaked ankle. I got Tammy in a couple leagues this week. Who would you rather have? Tammy, Colby Fleener. Fleener. 
But I think I think Dwayne Allen's going to play. I know you're teasing it for another another drop in a minute, but I think I think Dwayne Allen's going to going to show because they need him to be that blocking presence, especially since their running backs are decimated right now. Allen is the better inline blocker than Fleener. Yeah, and he's also the better red zone receiver. Absolutely. If it wasn't for the injury, he'd be on pace for those ten touchdowns I boldly predicted. If he hits it, is that a bold prediction though? Dwayne Allen getting ten? I think so. Yeah. Better than. Uh, Sky saying Brandon Cooks was going to get 100 receptions. <laughs> All right, so you're not big on Tammy? Uh, I don't really see it. I mean, I know he led the team in, in targets last week, but that's also because they were chucking it a ton because they were down by a lot. Right. Okay, Dwayne Allen. I don't tease, but you told me to tease, so here we go. Dwayne Allen, obviously, also with the ankle injury. Um, is Colby Fleener kind of like a uh, like a foray prospect in baseball? You know, a guy who has the skills, could be good, but, you know, unless he goes to, you know, Biogenics in Miami, he's going to become a Nelson Cruz, allegedly. Yeah, I'm, I mean, from what I watched of that game, he was basically, the, the Patriots basically took away T.Y. Hilton in that game, and we're giving everything short and outside to Fleener. So, I mean, I know he, his stats were 7 for 144 or somewhere in that vicinity, but I just don't see him anything more than like a medium to low target. He's probably going to get about six to eight targets, maybe catch three passes in the in the next game. I, I don't see him being what Allen potentially for fantasy could be. Is he a good player? Sure. I agree with you that he's like a quad A baseball player. Oh, good. <clears throat> maybe like a development basketball player. <laughs> he's in the D League? Yeah. He's Let's like, send him to the Canadian Football League. Hey, what... What do you call Chris Carter's son? It's coming. Jerron Carter is coming to the NFL. Breaking news. Ah, there you go. Uh, so, Jordan Reed, hamstring injury again. Hold on. You know what I'm going to do? Just to save the three minutes of digital tape, I'm just going to go back and replay it when we said it 19 times already this season. Yeah. If, if there's anything good in Jordan Reed's favor, it's to the other leg now. <laughs> At least he can walk with a pimp, pimp step with, and it'd be appropriate. But... What's healthier, Jordan Reed or that mac and cheese place across the street from you in Hoboken? Um, who? That's close. Because I had I've I've had the mac and cheese re recently, so I don't know. <laughs> well, you're not in the hospital. That's good news. I'm just kidding. The mac and cheese is awesome. Uh, I you know what I love about Hoboken when I come and crash at your place. Not only is there a mac and cheese place, you got uh, Carlos Bakeries there. So you can't arrest me. I'm the cake boss. <laughs> Yeah. What is it with you people from Hoboken and the the anger? I tried that too at the airport. I was like, "Don't you know me? I'm on the I'm on Fantasy Network." They're like, "What channel is that, sir?" <laughs> Fantasy Sports Network. Get it right. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to talk about Monty Ball re-injuring his groin, or are you just gonna make jokes if I say Monty Ball and groin? Ball and groin in the same sentence is that's a pay-per-view station, bro. <laughs> Okay, so obviously uh, C.J. Anderson was the buzzy name, and rightfully so, although he didn't really rush that well. Um, but he did catch eight balls for 80-plus yards. So he's not available. He was gone everywhere yesterday, but you can still get uh, Juwan Thompson. You think Thompson is worth rostering right now? If you're looking for extreme cuffs there, I mean, and it's a deeper league and you have useless space on your bench that you want to add somebody, why not add Capri Gips while you're at it too, their third running back? How about that? We do depth chart here. Capri Gips. That's an awesome name. That should be a baseball name. Yeah, it's totally. It, it, he, I think he, he think he plays in the English Premier League, actually. I think he plays for uh, Everton. <laughs> Wolverhampton. <laughs> hey, how's Derby County doing? Who, who is it? Derby County. I, they're in the championship, man. They're not in the top. top I, thought, I thought they got in on the playoff last year. No, no. They were in the, they were in the playoff, though, right? Yeah, they lost. Dang, Nevitt. All right, listen, uh, we're going to go to break in uh, just about a minute. What are you having for dinner tonight on the Hoboken Strip? Uh, I think I'm going to do sushi. Nice. If you're ever in Hoboken, Rob's address is... So call him up. Oh, I think I think we froze for a second there. Okay. Um, no, but you can follow this man on the tweet machine, at Smokey, with an E. That's how they spell in Hoboken underscore Lugi, L-O-O-G-Y, your local Hoboken expert and pretty boy. 
We got pretty boys in Seattle, pretty boys in Hoboken. We'll be right back after this break. This is Raspball Radio. This is the Fancy Sports Network. We'll be right back. We'll see you in a second. Don't go anywhere. Don't get mac and cheese. Mac and cheese is not that good for you. Stay there. Sit down. Welcome back, Raspball Radio, Fancy Sports Network. So just to change things up, Rob and I are going to do this whole segment in French. Okay, Monsieur Robert, comment ça va? Insight, baby. Insight. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Uh, let's get to some insights. So, Garrett Blunt was waived by Pittsburgh. Surprise, surprise, after he threw a little tantrum the other day. Do you think when Le'Veon Bell is ahead of you and Boston 200 yards a game that you should get playing time, Mr. Blunt? Is that what you think? What do you think, Rob? Oh, I mean, I, I there's numerous rumors of why he went to the locker room early. I mean, but no, you shouldn't be complaining about playing time when you have arguably the top two running back in the NFL right now. Are, are there any rumors that like you can seriously say on air? Um, no. Okay. No. No. Uh, okay, so Josh Gordon's back. This is interesting. You know, if we had thought of it, we probably should have left with it's Josh Gordon week here at Razball Radio. Um, let me ask you this. With the whole thing going on with AP right now, would you rather have AP or Josh Gordon? Oh, Josh Gordon. Okay. Tell me why. Well, for the for this week or forever? You're talking about for the rest of the season? Rest of the season. Oh, easily Josh Gordon. Only because running backs, if if you're looking for an Adrian Peterson to come back, your team is probably already crap. Yep. If you're, if you're looking for a wide receiver like Gordon to fill in, you're probably already in the playoffs because you've probably had Gordon rostered already and made adjustments to your team that you probably have a good wide receiver one and a decent wide receiver two already on your roster and now you have a, a bonus in Gordon coming back so from a, from a lineups perspective Gordon is probably on your roster because you're good Peterson is probably on your roster because you suck hmm interesting and but you know what it, it's a fair point you make about Josh Gordon because if you were in trouble early in this season you probably would have traded that asset for some more immediate help. So, okay. I'm with you. Hey, uh, talking about the English Premier League, you ever been to uh, London? Uh, no, I've, I'm have i not allowed to leave the continent in the United States. That's not true. You came to Canada. Yeah, I know. Liar, liar, pants on fire. London is awesome. You get to ride the tube. You can have bangers and mash. A little sherry. Warm beer. Ooh, warm beer. And the weather is awful. It's great. <laughs> okay, what... Um, Let's do it this way. Over under Josh Gordon, rest of season, 700 receiving yards. 707. And where they got six games left? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> six or seven. So this is week 11. So they go. Yeah, All right, so let me seven. rephrase it. Over under 100 yards per game, Josh Gordon averages rest of season. Uh, I'm going to say just slightly under. Okay. Over under, he averages a touchdown per game, rest of season. Under. So what do you project? Uh,. I'd probably say 40 receptions, 625 yards, and six touchdowns. Uh, Andrew Hawkins has been a little bit of a dynamo. Is he going to be helped here? Has this become uh, kind of like a Gordon Tate, uh, Gordon Tate, Golden Tate light scenario here with Hawkins? Uh, it, I think it will be. It's it's basically a matter of shifting usable parts in that Cleveland offense because. Look, they still have Hoyer as the quarterback. I know he's good down the field. And, you know, they have Gabriel there and Hawkins. Gabriel played well this past weekend. I think Hawkins slides into his true slot receiver role and basically it becomes a target magnet for Hoyer because defenses are going to want to take Gordon over, you know, they're basically going to double him. You know, and the matchup this weekend is going to completely show what Cleveland's going to try to do because they're playing the Falcons, who's – Defense against the pass is worse than the NFL. They let up like 280 yards. So if, if Hoyer can throw for 280 yards against the Falcons, then they're yeah. going to have something with Gordon. I think they're going to run the ball down the Falcons' throat just because the Falcons have been giving up the most fantasy points to running backs this year. Uh, so I was walking through downtown Phoenix. No, that's not true. You don't really want to walk through downtown Phoenix. Don't call me Phoenix Chamber of Commerce. It's all about the suburbs here. Um and on every post, you know, every light post was a uh, have you found Michael Floyd poster? Well, apparently Drew Stanton did twice this week. Let me ask you this. Is there any scenario where you see yourself other than a 2QB league starting Drew Stanton? Mm, with this last week, this is probably the last week you would use Drew Stanton ever because it's the last bye week. So if you have a Cam Newton or a Ben Roethlisberger and you're desperate for a QB, you know, I could see you rolling out Stanton in a, in a situation. 
you know, Stanton's probably going to give you 250 yards, two touchdowns, and two interceptions per game. Yeah. It's like, basically Mark Sanchez. Oh. Uh, would you rather have Stanton or Sanchez? Uh, Stanton, because I think Sanchez gets benched when, when what's his name, come, when Folk comes, at, comes back. Yeah, next year from the so, broken clavicle. He could still come back. got a time machine with hey, a hot tub. Hey, did, you, did you like Mark Sanchez's effort on that fumble? He's like, oh, I'm going to get it. Nope. <laughs> Mark Sanchez. By the end of his career, this guy's going to have a, you know, fill in the blank fumble for every part of his body. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I have a lower abdomen fumble. Is Michael Floyd startable now with Stanton here running the show? Yeah, yeah it's like a wide receiver three, yeah. Because he was droppable last week. That's fair. Mm-hmm. Oh, totally. And he's, he's probably more of like a wide receiver three now with upside. Yeah. Okay, would you rather have uh, Michael Floyd or Kenny Stills? Stills. Really? Yeah. Okay, what do you think Stills is going to do rest of the season? Give me a per-game average. Uh, figure eight to nine targets, six to seven catches, 80 yards. He's basically going to fill in for Cooks, but from what I was reading from this, all the Saints beat writers, you know, Breeze is not happy with the way the offense is opening up. So I, I think they're going to open up the offense this week. So if you're playing Jimmy Graham this week, I, I think you're going to lose. Interesting. Do you think that uh, Mark Ingram is going to take a hit if they open up the offense? Yeah, I do actually. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of disappointed to say I think I'm with you on that. Yeah, I was I just, loving me some Mark uh, Mark uh, Ingram this year. Yeah, I still like him too. I mean, it's just that I think the offense is going to open up because although the Saints have looked horrible and their record shows that they're not awesome, they're still alive with the NFC South the way it is. So I think if they tune up their offense a little bit and open it up the way that Drew Brees can, I think that they're going to be where they should be probably 500 or nine and seven and make the playoffs and host a host a playoff game probably okay rest of season would you rather have t-hole or jfo uh, both rasball writers rasball.com check it out i'll take i'll take t-hole if you needed a nurse would you rather have sky or jay oh jay definitely because because i've actually slept in jay's crib and he was very accommodating I, sky is the best if we're doing another tour Sky is like vice president of taking care of stuff. He was awesome. All right. We'll be back on Thursday. Who knows who will be who will be here? I'm feeling a little wacky this week. But Rob, you're the best buddy. Smokey underscore Loogie. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Raspberry Radio, Fantasy Sports Network. Have a great day.